Hello, I'm Blair. This is Matt. Welcome back to Seller Notes. Today we're out here at Lakeville Liquors number four, located on Kenrick Avenue and County Road 46. And we're going to talk a little bit about Champagne. From the relatively inexpensive to the extremely extravagant, more specifically, sparkling wines. Starting out with sparkling wine, sparkling wine can be made out of just about anything from grapes all the way to apples. It can be made from Chardonnay grapes all the way through a really heavy red Zinfandel grape into a sparkling white Zinfandel. Uh, it can be made anywhere from Italy, where a lot of Ostis and Spontis come from, California, Texas, even New Jersey. The original name Champagne comes from the Champagne region in France. Um, the only true champagnes come from that specific region in France. Everything else, whether it's from Italy or California or Australia, is classified as a sparkling wine. The bubbles in wine are derived from a secondary fermentation which occurs within the bottle, uh, producing CO2 which creates the bubbles. And the bubbles can create a lot of pressure. Early champagne makers had a lot of problems with explosions in cellars during their second fermentations, they did. So they had to make the bottles two to three times as thick as a normal wine bottle. And uh, the punt on the bottom, a kind of depression in the bottom of the bottle, helps to displace some of that pressure so that the explosions weren't so common. Champagnes range in uh, what I would call dryness, from very dry to pretty sweet. Um, Champagne actually started out as a really, really sweet wine. During that, before that second fermentation, they used to add sometimes as much as half sugar and half reserve <laughs> wine. So it was always a very, very sweet wine and eventually evolved as pro uh, technology progressed into a more uh, refined, drier wine that people had more of a taste to. Which actually made it palatable because in the beginning, uh, Champagne was created almost by accident and uh, darn near undrinkable. That's why they added the sugar. Today, as Matt said, there are a variety of different kinds of wines. Um, beginning with the sweeter type wines, um, such as an Asti, which is created in Italy. It's a sweeter style champagne. Um, it's extremely popular and actually I prefer it to the drier styles. It's but that's only personal taste. It's one of those wines you'll find at a lot of dinner parties because it caters to a lot of taste. It's made completely out of Moscato grapes, which makes it really sweet and high in sugar. What about the more typical wines, such as uh, an extra dry or a brut? An extra dry or a brut uh, are made out of primarily Chardonnay grapes. It's an extra dry. Thank you. Primarily Chardonnay grapes, and the next abundant grape would be Pinot Noir, and the least abundant would be Pinot... Any idea how to pronounce that? <laughs> no, let's skip that grape. I've <laughs> never heard of it, and you've never heard of it, so it doesn't really matter. It's a blending grape, and it's used in such small quantities that it really doesn't matter. It's majorly Pinot Noir and Chardonnay that are in champagnes. The extra dry is actually in between for example, an Asti and a Brut. The reason it's called extra dry is because it was created before the Brut. At the time, it was extra dry. Now, it is no longer the driest, yet it retains the name, which can be confusing to a lot of consumers. The next driest would be a Brut. I think you've got a Piper Heitzig right there, which is... That's a Piper nope, Heitzig extra dry. dry. <laughs> but pretty close. How about the Mum? Is this a Brut? This is that a is Brut. brut. How about the Mum Napa Cuvée? Sparkling wine, nonetheless, not champagne that, because it was made in California, not champagne in France. You know the entirety of the champagne region could fit inside the city, li city limits of Denver, Colorado? I'll bet Absolutely. you did, didn't you? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And to wrap it up, we'd like to talk a little bit about the expense of champagnes. Some of the most expensive champagnes, like Rotor or Cristal, Piper Heidsick, um, some of those two, three hundred dollar champagnes, Mouet Chandon, which makes the White Star the most um, uh, popular selling champagne in America, which is pretty amazing seeing as though it retails for about sixty-five dollars. But the reason a lot of these champagnes cost so much is because it costs so much to bring them to production. Individual bottle production, uh, the size and thickness of the bottle, how they had the grapes picked, where they hand picked, where they machine picked. Uh, were they hand-basketed? Were they thrown into a truck? 
the care take, uh, taken in making the wine, the second fermentation. The riddling process, which is all done by hand. The riddling process, taking the yeast out of the wine bottle after it's fermented, uh, whether that's done by hand or machine. As always, feel free to come into any one of our three convenient locations and any one of our knowledgeable staff will be glad to help you out. Have happy holidays and cheers. Thank you.